Hello, everybody. Okay, I moved my chat. So if I'm gazing, if I'm doing this, it's because I keep forgetting that the chat, which has always been on the right-hand side, but was kind of inconvenient, I have now figured out to <laughs> how to put it on the left. And the left is like straight on my vision and if I'm sitting here I mean it's perfect but I'm still getting used to it let me put a little few commands here go boy it was slow I thought maybe it wasn't recognizing my command okay we have something new and improved for some of the commands which are just the little things that I can stick at the top and maybe throughout the chat if the chat gets going good. Um, of course, the welcome. Now you can do the exclamation fiber and get what fiber I'm working on. And you also can, if it's pertinent, if it's a breed review, put the exclamation point sheep and you'll get a link to a picture of the sheep that provided the fiber that I am working with. So I'm a little happy about that because I think it's always fun to see the sheep. It's also fun when you buy fleece to know the name of the sheep and a lot of the shepherds that I have been buying from have included not only the name but a picture on a card and I just these are of course small flocks but still it's a nice nice way to relate to both the shepherd and the sheep the fleece that you're working with how's everybody doing happy wednesday and happy hump day <laughs> all this means for me right now is i am nine days away from needing to get all my fiber done and ready to spin for the Turtle Fleece. So I'm still working on it and I got one project done. Now I need to continue. But in the meantime, while I'm working here, I am going to do one of the breed reviews for the 52 weeks of sheep. And this particular breed, the Texel is the breed, does come in different colors and one of the colors is blue. I was going to look. Texel is, we're, I think it's like this week. It is week 32. So we have 20 more weeks left. We're more than halfway through and we're going to still do a lot of spinning and a lot of sheep breeds. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the breed, what I do when I go to the groups page. They have a post for each of the breeds and they print up these on their Facebook and I print them and it tells you about the breed. Now some of this is where it goes into the different registries and that sort of thing and not really something that I'm going to go into but the history is interesting because um, we are now on a breed that is relatively newcomer to the breed of sheep. We aren't doing these breeds that have been in Great Britain uh, for year, hundreds of years. This is a new one that was from a different country than the Great Britain. It was from uh, the island Texel off of the Netherlands. And it was created in 19... Oh, well, I don't know when it was created, but it was created on that island by crossing Lincoln and Lester Longwell. This is really interesting because 
I just recently spun for the Passport program both Lincoln and Lester Longwall and it kind of and I was surprised how alike they were especially because I was spinning already processed and so it's it's um, kind of fun to realize that they took these two breeds of sheep and combined them on this island Texel and combined them and developed its own breed of sheep called the Texels. Texel. They did go to the United States in 1985 and they were talking a little bit about when a breed of sheep comes to the United States they're, and it's brand new, like from a country that, and there are no breeders here in the United States yet, they do a five-year quarantine of the flock of sheep. And I, who knows where, I don't know. But they watch and breed and keep this flock of sheep for five years before they actually will release it to anybody that wants to raise them in the United States. And that's what happened in 1985 after their five-year quarantine then they sold some to private breeders who then have gone on with permission because the breed has now been accepted in the United States to bring in more sheep or to use artificial insemination and develop the breed here in the United States. They also have spread from Netherlands to France the UK, Australia, and New Zealand. This is mostly a meat sheep, and so there is not a lot of hope of running across super soft fleece with a Texel. They were raising it for meat, I'm sure, <laughs> on the island originally as a source of food for people who live there on the island. They're very docile sheep with good temperaments and they're said they're said to be very curious they're good lammers and good mothers they raise their lambs and they also supply a good amount of milk so i'm sure that in the years that they were being used they were also probably being milked and a source of milk for cheese I'm going to give you a little bit of facts about the fleece itself. The fleece total weight can be 7 to 12 pounds. That's going to vary between whether it's a ram or a ewe or a, a lamb. And the staple length is said to be 3 to 6 inches. And I'm going to show you the uh, staple length and everything when I... Uh, get to working with the fleece here, but I wanted to let you know that traditionally what they say the average is three to six inches. The micron count is 28 to 33. This is a pretty good micron count. It is definitely next to the skin soft for those that are tolerant of that micron count. It is not down by merino yet, but it does have very good possibility of being used for outerwear or a sweater with something under it or something like that. The lock characteristics are springy and there may be some Kemp. Now I didn't see Kemp in the sample that I got uh, and what I have is definitely springy. It just feels real bouncy. The natural colors is of course white but there's also what they call blue and badger faced with near black sheep. Now if you're in the chat, if you look, you'll see a great big huge link. But if you click on that, you should go to the Google image search for Blue Texel and just see tons and tons of pictures of the sheep, which is fun. So I encourage you, it's a perfectly safe link. I put it up there and I encourage you to go take a look. Let's see, what else do I want to tell you off of here? The terminology blue means that their fiber is a steel gray color and that is what I ended up with. When I bought the sample it was the only choice I had and I had no idea. I figured that that was pretty standard for the breed but I was surprised to find that most of them t uh, tend to be white and I got an opportunity to work with this blue that is pretty fun. 
Okay, and we are going to talk about, of course, how to prep it and spin it, because that's the whole purpose of this live stream tonight. Now this, this sample came from Marie Redding Fiber Arts. It's an Etsy store. There is a link there. And uh, by the way, if you're a, a viewer that does come back, I have set up commands the command is always an exclamation point and then type the word, but I've set up the command fiber, exclamation point fiber, if I'm any time that I'm working with fiber, which will be every time unless I'm actually knitting, and the command exclamation point sheep if I happen to be doing a breed study and you can go see the picture uh, if I don't post it. Now, I've already posted it there for you, but sometimes I might forget. So anyway, I got this from Marie Redding. The sample was unwashed and came all wrapped up in a little brown package. And the uh, it was a hundred grams. It was very inexpensive. It was not. It was five and a half dollars U.S. dollars. It is. It did come from the U.K. Um, I wanted to let you know that this is about half of it that is in the 100 grams. It's a nice sample to work with. It's a little over three ounces if you know you use our measuring system. But these three locks right here, or three and a half, I'll count that one right there, those are the only really intact locks I found in that whole three ounces of it. You know, so this is not a candidate for the um, lock spinning or working with locks or anything like that. And as you can see, they said it was three to six inches. Well, this is, oh, I don't think you can see that very well, but this is measuring three and a half inches on the ruler. So it really is short compared to the three to six. And maybe if, if I had a sample that had the six inches, I would have more locks. But in this case, I don't. So I have taken these three precious locks and put them in a bag that, or I'm going to put it in the sheet that I make the breed review so that I have a good example of the locks. I have, I have to tell you, when I washed this up, um, I did go through this looking for locks. That's the first thing I always do. And I found these three, so I had to put them in one little place and hold on to them and wash them all completely separately so I wouldn't lose them. <laughs> okay. Let me get a drink here. Ready to get started. So the first thing when I have a fleece sample is I'm, you know, looking to see what all is in it. And the first thing I noticed, besides the fact that there wasn't any locks, was I had pretty distinct color differences in two cases. A real dark gray. I'll bring that in a little. Well, no. And the lighter and this is gray and tan so it's so subtle that it kind of all looks like a real light gray on here but if you look at it you can distinctly see the tan and the gray and this light gray is what gives it that name of blue so the next thing I look at is the fact that there's no lock, so if I'm going to card and comb it, it doesn't matter what I use. I'm just going to have to use this kind of fiber where it's all jumbled. It's some short, some longer. And I once I have washed it, I don't even need to pull it apart too much. It was moderate lanolin and it washed up really nice that lanolin just went away it's very springy feeling and you know relatively soft 
So the, I have decided to, in the working up of the breed review, I am not going to use the dark and mix it in there with that. And the reason is because I have the remainder of the fiber here. I'm going to add this, and this is what I'm going to drum card into a bat, which is going to give me a really pretty um, tweedy looking yarn. And I'm almost thinking about maybe trying to do a three ply, not the separate colors, but we'll see what it what it works up into. So this is what I'm going to be putting, uh, spinning yarn out of and putting in the uh, pile of hand spun yarn to use to make something. A very small something. And this I will use whatever I need. I covered up the name. Whatever I need for the breed study and then go on and put the rest of it with the drum card in. So I'm going to comb first. And if I had locks I would of course be trying to pick locks and put on there but I don't. So the combing has to just be loaded like this. You just very gently put clumps of fiber, pull it off, clumps of fiber. This kind of breed, this short, is not the best for combing. It is really uh, much better for hand carding. And so we'll just see what I get when I do this. That's the whole reason I'm doing it. And I just go back and forth between the two combs. And you can see most of it comes right off there. It's just almost gone. I don't even try and pull any top off there. I have a little bit of short bits there. I think I will comb it one more time. Just because I'm enjoying the combing. And it will transfer all the way over. I just realized I forgot to put my waste back basket underneath there. I guess I'm going to be piling this on my floor. And then, let's see if this will show on the camera. Oh yeah, we're going to pull off top. And it just wants to spring right back into that club of fiber. It is so springy. Not much. Uh, that, you know, that's not much. And that's because of the real short staple length. And as you can see, there's little tiny nips in there and this is the waist. Just look how short that is and that's why that came out that way. I can try pulling, but no, you can't really pull anything off of that. All right. Give me a second. I forgot to turn my music on. That's driving me crazy because I like to have my music. Just a minute here. All right, I like that so much better, especially when I'm not talking. If at any point the mic does not sound good to you, please let me know in the chat. All I can tell is the little thing is bouncing up and down. If I would say anything about this fiber after washing it, I would say it's a little bit dry. And, you know, I don't... I'm pretty sure I washed it with did not write it down and I don't I usually don't do that but I must have been in a hurry um, I'm almost positive I used the power scour by unicorn can't tell by the smell I it has to be because the my three choices for washing 
fiber is um, the power scour, the Natalie Redding uh, scour the scoundrel, which doesn't really have any aroma, and Dawn, which the Dawn and the power scour has aroma. The uh, both of them have a distinctive smell to them. Now you can see I got quite a bit on there. But if I'm careful, I can pull it off. But I may have put too much on the comb. But I didn't want such a wimpy little piece of top like I got the last time. That's better. That's much better. And what I have to do when I'm doing a breed study, and I'm, this takes a little bit of time, I can, uh, combing takes a little more time than carding, but um, I'm only going to comb and card tonight. There's no lock spinning. Um, there is just no other t than those two options. So I'll uh, be f making the the prep and then spinning it. I don't think I'll play more on that. I'm looking forward to tomorrow morning. Our weather broke as far as the heat. It's not going to last, but right now we are having low humidity and nicer tempers, temperatures. And tomorrow morning I'm going to sit on my porch and I'm going to pick open uh, fiber, Shetland fiber that I have washed and dyed and needs to be picked apart so that I can put it on the drum carter. So I'm looking forward to doing that tomorrow. Now that wasn't good. That pulled on through from the back of the comb. That's not a good thing. And I have one clump there. It's interesting that that gray really goes away. The If I lay that top right next to all of that gray, it looks like it's just all looking tan now. I'm not getting very much gray. These combs are, I think, Forsyth. Um, they are Forsyth, Forsyth, F-O-R-S-Y-T-H. They're in uh, British Columbia, Canada is where they are. I don't know if they're still in business. I've had them for a long time, but I have used them over and over and over. I like the size. I like that they just fit in your hands. They're lightweight. It's not something that I would make, you know, a whole bunch of top with, but it's perfect for sampling. It really is. And as you can see, I flip my comb. Try to get it all off onto one. I'm going to stop, I think, with this. So it'll take me just a little bit to spin and ply this. That one's a little grayer. Maybe I was just grabbing on a lot of, of the uh, tan. 
I have from just that little bit that much waste. It's tragic, I know, and and you can see it just is so. I would have to drum card that, hand card it or whatever, and just use it in a very lumpy state. Normally, I just don't care because I have whole fleeces to work with, so you know I don't really care. But when you have a small sample like this, it kind of is sad. Let me move this over a little bit. This wheel is my Roberta Electric, and hopefully, I'm going to be able to see against my black slacks. Now, the hard part about this is just judging, splitting this that I made. I can always make more, but that's not something I would sit here and do on a live stream. I was plying on this earlier, so I imagine it's pretty hefty pull in. I gotta check my plug. It worked before. Holy mackerel. There we go. Gotta put your drive band on right. Okay. Bean top, I'm gonna try what is called worsted. That means I'm gonna stop the pinch right here. I'm gonna stop the twist right here with the pinch. Said that backwards. And you go for as smooth and tightly twisted single. And that's called worsted. Nice spin. Spin's good. Got a few little tiny nips in there, but they're hardly even significant to stop and pull them off. Feels good. You can see the see the crimp in there. Me. It's not not real real crimpy. Just sorta moderate crimp. I have a feeling if I had a whole fleece that was actually this size of staple length, I wouldn't bother combing. Too much waste, and I, it's a, <laughs> I'm tongue-tied here, it's, it's a bouncy fiber anyway, so you might as well go with that characteristic and go for the yarn that is going to be bigger, thicker, bouncier very good for hats and mittens and scarves it just feels like it would be very nice for that let me just take a little piece off of here and hopefully i have guessed and divided it evenly and the only reason i said anything about a three ply earlier um, actually is because it probably would be really good socks too and if i'm going to make sock yarn actually to be honest with you i would comb it i want a very smooth yarn to start with whatever ply i do so if i was going to go for socks and i don't have enough in the sample but if i was going to go for socks i would definitely go for combing it a little 
oil on my thing here. And as you can see, this is going to be a very tiny sample of yarn. <clears throat> Looks variegated, gray and white. You have to look at it really close. It's very subtle. It's pretty. I have very long leaders. And a rattly bobbin. Sorry about that. Sometimes once it gets some fiber on it, it gets happier. Oh man, if you would buy this already processed, you would just sit and spin like the wind. It would spin so nice. And I'm sure if you are really tired of, you know, this brown gray color, or because you've worked with other sheep from it, uh, CVM is a, a common one that comes looking like this. That's, um, California variegated mutant. Uh, this would over dye nice, very nice. I like to watch myself on the <laughs> screen spinning. <laughs> I found that out last Sunday when I, I was plying uh, last Sunday spinning. And uh, I found that out. I, it, I enjoy watching that draft and everything. I wonder if anybody notices. Probably not, my head's down. I just sit here and smile when I'm spinning. I just so love it. Okay. We will see how close I came to making ends meet here. For those of you who are watching this after the fact, up till now, Twitch has not deleted any of my live streams. Technically, their notes, their you know, frequently asked questions and all that, say that they only last two weeks. And I fully expected them to go away. So you can find my same streams on YouTube. And the difference is you're going to have to use, it isn't under Yarn Spinner's Tales. It's under um, a different name. And you know what? I need to make a command and put that up here too. Um, I will do that next time. But just right now, all I really wanted to let you know is that if they happen to go away, <laughs> you know, they're not gone for good. 
um, they are being archived on YouTube, on, a, on my channel on YouTube video. Which is good too if, you know, okay, so you don't happen to need the information right now, but, but you know, a year down the road, all of a sudden you want to wash locks, which is the one thing I did last week. Actually, just Googling it should bring it up. Because it's tagged that way. I have some videos that have been on there since, you know, for at least 10 years. Because I was doing it very roughly 10 years ago. They've had thousands of views because people just Google and find them. Information they need, right time at the right place. Oh, I have a little bit extra on one of these. Well, we'll just do it this way. Okay, for as pretty as the fleece looks, sadly, the yarn kind of looks dirty. I, I hate to say that. <laughs> it's that gray. All right, if I get this little bit here, I'm going to park the two-ply right there. I'm going to wrap this around my thumb and wrap this around there till I come to the end. Take it off or cut it off. Nope. Come on. Come out of there. It is really stuck. Scissors. I don't want that fuzzy bit anyway. Okay, I'm going to take my other end, park it in between these two plies, let the twist run into it. So I went way back into where the twist was. Hopefully you can see this. Let it twist onto that end, back up here a little bit, grabbing everything. Let the twist run just a little bit, hold on to it, start up the ply again. Of course, you can treadle if you're treadling. I have to flip a switch and then just take it off your hand like that. That's how I finish up when one bobbin doesn't match. Now, if I have a whole bunch, I have to make a center pull ball with it, with what's left over. But when it's just that little tiny bit like that, don't need to do that. All right. So here is the blue Texel worsted. And I need to write this uh, down in my notes here. It's a two ply. I have no idea how much yardage I have. I really don't keep track of that. But I do want to wraps per inch. And I forgot my, I think, I did. I forgot my wraps per inch tool. So I'll just use my ruler. And if you've never done this, you just start on the inch mark. Do I have enough? No. Let's start the other way. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven reps per inch. Let's see if that's right. 
two, four, six, eight. Actually, it's 12, counting the first one. You can see that on there. 12 wraps per inch is pretty good, really. Um, my uh, carded will not be that thin. And the whole reason I make these little tags is what I will do, and I, I brought my knitting needles, but I'm not going to take the time, is I will knit a swatch out of this, and then I will um, take a twist, what's left, take a twist of it. But right now I'm just going to put it up in a little ball. My swatches tend to be probably 20 stitches and about 10 rows. So they're rectangles. I mean, they're not very big swatches. Because I want to have a little bit of a butterfly of the fiber left to put in the plastic packet. And the, I use photo sheets. And this is backwards. But the fiber will go up here. And the worsted and the woolen will go right here. The information sheet goes there. I hook them together. And that's what goes in a Rubbermaid tub for my brie review. That is how I have set up the entire brie review studies that I've been doing for years. Okay. Ready to card. But what I have to do is this all looks alike after I stop, so I'll wrap it around the label so I remember what's what. Okay, carding, pretty straightforward, and I'm sure everybody this has seen somebody card at one point or another. Maybe not, but you can put about that much fiber on there. You can put more on later. You can see, you just lay it on one, and you hold one with the teeth up and one with the teeth down, and you just brush top to bottom. Always go top to bottom. And see how it has straightened it out. I want to transfer. That was always kind of the tricky part. You have to go down by the handle on one hand and rake across the other card. That transfers it over there and you comb it. I also want a little bit more on here. So once I already have some fiber on, I tend to open this fiber up a little bit more than because it's already got some nice smooth in there and I don't want to add a whole bunch of clumps. But the fiber, the staple length is so short, it works really good. You don't want to try and comb or card anything that is longer than the distance that you have on your cards. Now they make different size cards so you can get bigger cards if you're going to be working with longer stapled fiber. These are what I got when I was raising Angora rabbits and dealing a lot with Angora. So I was using that. Now that is puffing up off of it. That's about the amount I want to take off into a little tiny bat. And you do that by taking your uh, down by your handle again and just very gently rolling it off. And it's not gonna it's not coming off in what you 
think of as a roll log at this point, although it's coming off all hooked up together. But when it comes off the card, that's kind of what it looks like. This, I don't consider well carded. See that? That's going to spin. This part's pretty good. So what I'm going to do is start over. Let's see if we can get it any better. Maybe I put too much on. When I drum card bats, I almost always do two passes. But a drum card is a different kind of carding. It has a small feed-in drum that takes a lot of that small stuff off. And that doesn't happen when you're doing with the hand cards. There's absolutely nothing to take that off with. It's all going to end up in your bat. However, that looks a little better. I could... I'll spin with it this way. But I could draft it out if I wanted to. Now I need to speed up a little bit and just make about three more of these. Enjoy the music. Anybody has just joined or has been popping in and out or whatever, the links that you see there, the uh, first one is under fiber is the source of this fiber, Marie Redding Fiber Arts, if you're interested. She does have a lot of different breeds of sheep fiber available. That's too much. The second great big huge link is perfectly safe. It's I put that on there. It's under sheep. It will show you the Google images for the blue textile. Texel. It's Texel. Blue Texel. find this one acceptable first time through. Got one piece of hay there or something. the sound of hand carding. I removed that because it was chunky and had a piece of hay in it. Last one.
If anybody is interested in listening to podcasts and is not aware of it, I have done podcasts for years under the name Yarn Spinner's Tales. I just released one today, and it is on the Coopworth sheep breed. So, and lock spinning. Lock washing and lock spinning. A lot of the same information as the live stream last Wednesday. Only in a verbal format. Okay, I'm going to show you here real quickly. You get fiber left over in your, and you just take it out like this. And sometimes I end up spinning that. It's comb, it's carded, so that cleans your cards off. Now, let me get this started. If I've gone to the trouble of carding it, I should spin it woolen. That's where you get it nice and fluffy. And sometimes it takes me a little bit to get woolen set up here on this because this will pull in so much. You don't want a lot of pull in. But you do need a fair amount of twist. Oops, don't do that. Get this out of the way. So let's see if I can get one going here. This is going too fast. That's not going fast enough. <laughs> too fast, not fast enough. And in woolen, you don't pinch, you twist. It runs all the way back to your fiber supply. This is called supported woolen. It is about the only thing I can do. Some people go way back. They just pull long drafts out and pull go way back behind their back. I find that ergonomically a terrible way to spin. So I don't do it. The main thing to make it woolen is don't be smoothing it down. Don't be pinching, except for starting out. Don't be pinching it. You know, get fiber pulled out and let the twist run into it from your source. You can see my bat is running all over the place and what some of it wants to really be thick I'm having a hard time pulling out consistent in other words my judgment on this is I'm not so sure it's going to be a real good candidate to spin woolen even though it's a nice bouncy yarn and uh, because of the neps in it and the fact that the carding is not producing a real consistent bat. Now that also can be part of that is using the hand cards. If I would use my big drum carder and I card it a couple times I'd have a much better bat. So that would be my first thing to try and see if it would fix it. As you can see, I'm getting this short and thick. 
I'm getting the short stuff, making it thick and thin. And that's because that's all included in that bat. It didn't get taken out. That was that was what was making up that waste from the combing. Was all that stuff that is in here and making it thick and thin. get sort of a nice yarn. The bat is pretty compacted. It doesn't flow out of the fiber supply like the top did. That was smooth spinning. Piece of short stuff here. And that last little bit was just full of little stuff. Not very nice. See, I was smiling when I was spinning that top, and I'm not smiling right now. <laughs> it's not as easy to spin. <laughs> the carded and the woolen. I got it thick there. I'm messing with the angle right now of, of the pole. I, I kind of wonder maybe if that might not help a little bit. Not sure why. Seem to be getting a little easier pull out of the fiber supply without it going too thin. Yeah, it went real thin there. why all the little uh, bobble bits always go all the way down to the end. But it does. Oh, I need to change my hook here. Okay. too thin. Too much pollen. That's what it is. I 
and that's not I, I slowed the speed down but that's not enough twist so can't find it can't find the sweet spot oh look at my black pants <laughs> I've been spinning Thin. Well, it's going to be interesting because I am going to drum card the remainder. And that won't be on this live stream, but when I talk about it later, maybe on the podcast, I'll be able to say whether that made a difference or not because this I'm not impressed with spinning it woolen with the hand cards I should have put a brown or I should take this off and see it better all right let me apply this Can't see that there very well. All right, gonna have a bumpy, lumpy yarn. like the thicker yarn a little bit. I mean it looks like it's going to be a lot really nice to knit with even in spite of the I have knit with worse <laughs> as far as thick and thin and it was perfectly fine.
Now I could stop and pick all these bits out. I don't for the sample yarn. I want to have a reminder there that the fleece had it in there. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. It's not just that I'm too lazy. <laughs> well, that was a thick lump. You can tell I've done this a few times, can't you? I never come out even. Thank you for the follow. I got my little jingle dingle. Getting rid of that. Where's my end? There it is. Okay. We're almost done here. I'll take this off after I get these hooked in. And we'll do a reps per inch count. And call it a night. I got more yarn. You can tell in this sample. And what happens is I knit my little swatch and then I save a little thing and then when I have left over, I usually have maybe eight yards left over or something like that and I've been throwing those all in a basket. So I don't know what exactly I'll do with them but now let me get Somewhere near the end here. I have a wraps per inch thing and I recommend them. This is cumbersome. All right, there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's ten. That's actually more wraps per inch than I expected with the um, worsted yarn. It's not bad. It doesn't have a lot of bounce. It's very, it's very balanced. <laughs> so that is it for tonight. <laughs> Hi. Um, no, this isn't a problem fleece at all. This is one of the 52 weeks of sheep. Pookie Paws has asked, she missed the beginning and it was wondering if it was a problem fleece. Trust me, I've had those too. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, it did it again. <laughs> oh, Neps, yeah. <laughs> Neps is not a word in, in the rest of the world, is it? <laughs> Don't you love spell correct? Um, this is, the blue Texel is one of the 52 weeks of sheep that I'm studying. And so I do these routinely with any new breed and put it into my, um, breed folder. And so that's what I was doing. And I'm, when I work with these, I only get, this was, um, three ounces, a hundred grams. So I only get a small amount of fleece and I don't really do a whole bunch with it. Uh, but I definitely do the processing so that I have in my notes later, if I get a whole fleece, what would be the best way to process it. So that was the blue Texel. 
I will be putting up notices and of course if you follow me and set on your alerts that um, if you say yes for the alerts you'll know when I go live but I am going to have a stream change this week it's going to be Saturday noon Eastern Standard Time um, we have an obligation that we have to go to on Sunday which is my normal stream time so it's just going to get pushed up a day and it's just a spinning so I hope you can join me then and I really appreciate you popping in and watching those of you that have been coming and going while I was streaming right now and those of you who follow up and watch it later. See you later. Happy spinning.